reading from the Gospel according to John. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume, made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so she might have it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that so many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus.
There exists a long tradition of capturing someone's last words and actions before their death. It stretches back at least to Socrates. It speaks of our intuition that you can tell a lot about someone by the way that they approach death. And we know today, after the triumphal entry of Palm Sunday, and that Gospel reading's depiction of the leader's renewed determination to kill Jesus, that we are in the final stages of Jesus's life. Indeed, John underlines the point by opening today's reading with the words, six days before the Passover. We are now on a countdown towards the Passover that will end all Passovers. In the days to come, therefore, we follow the course of Jesus's last days. Perhaps on the way we will pick up insights for ourselves on how to live well. But first and foremost, we observe his final actions, contemplating who Jesus is. And in our reading today, Mary Magdalene performs the shocking act of taking down her hair in the middle of a dinner party and using it to wipe Jesus's feet with an immense amount of expensive perfume. John the Gospel writer plays the scene up more than the other Gospel writers. This is a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. What does this scene offer us about who Jesus is? I want to highlight three things. First, Jesus allows Mary to do this. He recognises that it is important for her to express her care and love in this way for her close companion. And perhaps for John the Gospel writer, it is a sign of the devotion that we might all rightly want to show the person who embodies God's own life of compassion and self-sacrifice. Second, Jesus pushes back against Judas's complaints. You always have the poor with you, he responds, but you do not always have me. No one with an eye to Jesus's long ministry of serving those in need could take his words to mean that acts of care and compassion are unimportant. In three days time, Jesus himself will get down on his knees and wash the feet of his disciples. Rather, Jesus's words to Judas emphasise that a life of service of those in need must be underpinned by a life of prayer. The point is true for Jesus and it is true for us. We need prayer that helps us to find and remember the sources of joy and comfort in our lives. We need prayer that forms us in the self-giving example of Christ. And we need prayer that strengthens us to serve in our daily lives. Mary's act of anointing is a reminder to us of the prayer and service that shapes Jesus's own life. And it is a pattern of prayer and service that now in his final days, his disciples start to take on for themselves. And finally, as Jesus acknowledges, Mary's anointing is an anointing that prepares him for his death. It is towards death that we direct our gaze this Holy Week, as self-giving love encounters the darkness that exists in the world. On the way, we may well pick up more about ourselves, and perhaps while well, also we contemplate who Jesus is. We wait for Jesus's final words from the cross. It is finished. And we wait for the joy of Easter day when he is known in the glory of his resurrection. 
So let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the world sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and so be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 